Hi everyone, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel, What Cass Read. Today I'm going to bring you my spoiler-free review of A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I had been going back and forth on whether or not I actually wanted to review this for you all because of how many Darker Shade of Magic reviews there are on booktube, but you know I thought about it and people who subscribe to my channel have said to me time and again that they really trust my opinions and so I just decided even though everybody pretty much has already read this book, if you wanted to know my thoughts, here they are. So A Darker Shade of Magic is the first book in the Shades of Magic trilogy written by V.E. Schwab, and it follows our two main characters named Kel and Lila, and they exist in a world of varying degrees of magic. And what I mean by that is that it is centered in the city of London, but there are actually four parallel universe Londons, and they are named Grey London, Red London, White London, and Black London. Kel, one of our main characters, is a magician called an Antari, and he's one of the two remaining Antari in the entire world, and he can actually travel between the parallel universes. And officially, he serves as a messenger between the royalty of the different realms of London, and unofficially, he has a habit of smuggling things between the parallel Londons, and that is a big thing that you're not supposed to do. Kel ends up being set up to accidentally smuggle a token from one London to a different London, and once he does that, all hell breaks loose, and then our events take off from there. Next, I want to talk about the world building. This is where I'm a little bit conflicted about this story, because like I said at the beginning, there are four different Londons. Um, they're all parallel universes. There's the Grey London, Red London, White London, and Black London. Grey London is the London that we are all familiar with, and there is no magic to be found in Grey London. It has the same uh, landmarks, it has the River Thames, it has Buckingham Palace, it has the royalty, and we have one of our main characters, Lila Bard, who resides in Grey London. To me, that serves as the anchor for the rest of the story, because most of the readers will be able to identify with that London. Then Red London is where I felt V.E. Schwab excelled in her world building because it created this wonderful, vibrant London that had magic spilling out from everywhere. There was a reddish tint to it, there was a rosy smell to it, the River Thames had a different name, but it was glowing bright red because it was a powerful source of magic. And I really enjoyed our scenes and our descriptions that took place in Red London. Then we have White London. If we were to follow a, a linear pattern of all these parallel universes, uh, White London sits in between Red London, which is full of magic, and Black London. The magic in Black London has been corrupted. So what happened to White London is Red London decided to shut itself off from the rest of the parallel universes and White London became this frozen wasteland, decrepit, and starving for magic. It's very cruel, it's very sinister, and again, this was a really great world-building experience, I felt, between White London and Red London. Now, where I get a little bit conflicted about this is the fact that we use different Londons as our anchor, but once we get to the different Londons, none of the landmarks or anything are the same, and the names are all different except for the city itself. So to me, I felt like it was kind of a neat little draw-in for the audience um, to have these parallel Londons, but I felt it was a little bit lazy to name them all London when there was nothing else that was similar about them. I just felt like I would have liked a few more anchors between the parallel worlds. I thought that would have been a really interesting piece to the story to have maybe the exact same layout, but just the different degrees of magic in each of the different cities. Obviously, there's a magic system in here because one of our main characters, Kel, is an Antari magician. There are only two of them in the world. They're able to invoke magic by using blood or bone, and it's not a skill that everybody has. I thought that was a really cool use of magic in this kind of story. So I want to talk about the characters. Like I said, there are two main characters. We have Kel, who is our Antari magician. He's the first main character that we meet. He has a really awesome coat that I'm just super jealous of, and it could be because I'm reading the Great Coat series right now, but I am in love with all different kinds of magical coats right now. Kel's coat in particular has infinite an infinite number of sides, so he can just take his coat off, turn it inside out, and then it'll be a completely different coat for a completely different function, and I thought that was super awesome, like a really cool function. Kel is the magician in the Red London, and he actually is a ward of the royal family. He grew up there, he considers uh, the Prince Rai his brother. The king and queen raised him, but he is not a member of the royal family, and he's very, very very adamant about telling other characters that he's not royalty. Aside from this like brooding character that we get, there's not that much backstory with Kel 
there are hints of it, there's a couple scenes of it, but we don't get a lot of backstory. What we get, what we see is what we get with Kel. Um, he's very passionate about his mission. We just know that he's incredibly fond of his younger brother, Prince Rai. He would do anything for him, and that is just a main driving force that he has. We also have Lila Bard, who, to me, I could go either way on her. I wasn't really for her or against her. She's a young, rough and tumble, pirate, street, urchin, pickpocket. Um, she's very quick-witted and she always has uh, the comeback for people, but other than that, that's also about as much character development we get off of Lila Bard. I do want to mention Prince Rai as another one of our uh, main characters. He's like a side main character. He is the Prince of Red London. He is Kel's younger brother. He's very charismatic. He's loving. He's warm. I really enjoyed his scenes. We didn't get a lot of scenes from him, but we know that he is very appreciative of everything that Kel has to give to him. Um, and he's really appreciative of Kel's magic. And he's not actually a very good magic user himself. There's another character that I haven't mentioned yet. His name is Holland. He is the other Ontari magician in this world. He works for the Royal Palace in White London. And he is our main antagonist in this story. He has the same powers as Kel, but the way in which he uses them, the way that in which he is allowed to use them is vastly different, and he's just a really interesting antagonist. And for me, I wish we had a few more scenes with him, and I hope that we get some more scenes with him in the upcoming books. So overall, my thoughts on this, I'm kind of square in the middle. For the first part of the book, um, I would say about the first 150 pages of it or so, 150 to 200 pages, I was actually really enjoying it and I was kind of confused about why some people had some pretty strong negative reactions to the story. And then as I got toward the second half, the latter third of the book, then I started um, picking up on just some incredible cliches and found that some of the explanations that were given were just not really adding up. I still finished it fairly quickly. I finished it in about three days, but that second part of the book um, definitely turned my opinion of it to more negative, and I can see why maybe some people just flat out didn't enjoy this book, because there just wasn't a lot of explanation given when there could have been. Overall, I did end up giving this book three out of five stars. It was, like I said, it was smack dab in the middle for me, and I do plan on continuing this series because I'm just really intrigued to see what happens. I just feel like, as I said, as we got to the end of this book, there were some explanations that fell flat. There were some new things that were introduced that weren't fully set up. Yeah, I began to see some pieces kind of fall apart, and I would like to see if V.E. Schwab is able to pick those back up and, and rectify it. The other books are thicker, so maybe she has more time to give some explanation to some things. And I didn't totally hate it, but I didn't totally love it either. So three out of five stars. All right, everyone. So that was just another Darker Shade of Magic review here on BookTube. Like I said, I wasn't initially planning on doing one um, and adding to the noise, but you come here to hear my opinions. And so I just had to give it for you. So if you want to hear my spoilery thoughts, because yes, I will be making a spoilery video on this, um, please join me over there. I've got some more things to say, but I just didn't want to say them in the spoiler-free version. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining me. Please leave your comments in the comment section below if you have anything to add, anything that I missed. Maybe there were some different parts about the world building or the magic or the characters that you thought completely different than me, and I would love to hear them. And then you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's at WhatCastRed. It's the same as this channel, so I'm super easy to find. Or you can find my Goodreads link, and that's always going to be down below. Otherwise, you know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later.